Thank you for your attention and we wish you all a pleasant flight. This video is sponsored by Chromophonic. Hello everybody, I'm glad you made it. A big thank you to all the people that watched my videos and to the members of the VI Control for understanding and not misunderstanding my little videos. You're great. So are you ready for creative sampling? If not, watch my previous video, links above and in the description. Now then, before we drive up to London to my secret studio, let's take a ride to a tranquil location for a little preparatory sermon. So let's have a little sermon. Off we go. Today we'll implement three concepts to build a contact instrument out of thin air, literally. And since I want you to experiment with building your own instrument, I won't make the instrument available as a download. Look at it as a simple build for the purposes of applying theory to practice. So here we are. Let's look at the three concepts. Now then, let's open this uh, cheap beer. Bloody hell. The first concept, harmonic series. If you want to know details about the harmonic series, links above and also in the description. Briefly, the concept of harmonic series is that every note on most instruments is not a single note, but it's actually made out of several notes. The fundamental frequency provides the pitch and the upper harmonics give the instrument its sonic character. So concept one, the harmonic series. The second concept, well, let me demonstrate. Listen to this and listen to this. Which one is the guitar and which one is the piano? Hard, right? This demonstrates the power of the attack and the release of the sound in aiding your brain to correctly identify an instrument. Concept two, attack and release. And the third concept, apophenia which is the tendency to make connections between seemingly unrelated things. In particularly, we are going to subtly exploit pareidolia. Look at this image. Now, look at these two images. We will be using auditory pareidolia, which is the ability of the brain to find patterns when they are known. I, I'm sure it has happened to some of you. You enter a bathroom, as you start thinking about which sample library Spitfire audio is dropping next, out of the bathroom fun, the sounds of distant soundtracks and musicals, Hans Zimmer strings professional, can be heard. So, what I'm trying to say is, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, love, can you please move? Oh, it's getting windy here. Let's go back to the studio. Here we are. I love when the lift opens straight into the studio. Welcome home, Promophonic. All alarms are disabled. Thank you, Helga. Let's see now. Yep, this one. Visual perception is a creative process. Although visual and auditory stimuli are processed primarily by different brain regions, my gut feeling and recent research suggests that memory is a common component in making sense of what you are seeing or hearing. As you can see here, memory can be divided into different categories, explicit memory and implicit memory. Explicit memory 
deals with facts and events, but more importantly, the implicit or the non-declarative memory is associated with priming, procedural skills, associative learning and non-associative learning, habitual or sensitization. So when your brain is faced with complex or seemingly random patterns, it engages your memory and tries to generate familiar patterns to facilitate recognition and put your mind at ease. Different plugin companies like Waves or sampling companies like Spitfire Audio and others um, exploit these implicit memory aspects in your brain to promote their products, to take your ponies. By the way, this is one of my favorite books. So the third concept, pareidolia. Let's start taking advantage of this concept first. It will be a very subtle effect, but it will be there. Imagine a one square meter column raised to the end of Earth's atmosphere. According to my scientific calculations, it should contain 25 followed by 29 zeros molecules of thin air. These thin air molecules and other ambient noises will influence what my trusted Zoom H1 microphone pick up. So let's go. All right, here we are. So this is Isotopes RX. We won't be using it today. I just want to show you what thin air looks like on the spectrogram. To remind you at the top you have the high frequencies and at the bottom you have the low frequencies. The brightness shows how loud the particular frequencies are. Let's give it a listen. As you can see and hear, our thin air resembles pink noise even closer to brown noise. However, there is random and complex variation uh, in the intensity of the various frequencies, which adds to the ambience. This is our concept three. Let's jump into Cubase now. Here is our simple audio file. I want to tune our thin air. I also want to adjust its tone, but how? We will take advantage of concept one, the harmonic series. For this, I found a little sweet harmonics calculator on Michael Norris's webpage, links in the description. The calculator is straightforward. You choose the key and the octave. In my case, I want to tune it to D uh, octave six, to D six. And here you add the number of harmonics that you want to calculate. I'm only interested in the first four harmonics, the fundamental and the first three overtones. So I'm going to type here four. Give the calculate button a click and these are the frequencies of the fundamental, the first overtone, the second overtone, the third overtone. Back into Cubase, I loaded Curvy Q that comes together with Cubase, but you could use almost any EQ in any DAW. I created four curves corresponding to the four harmonics of D6 from the calculator. The beauty of this approach is that it allows me to control the shape of the curve and therefore how broad or narrow the tuning is. What is important here is that by holding down shift, I can use the mouse to regulate the level of each harmonic. This allows me to create a, a tone, a timbre. I can also stack these EQs on top of each other in an additive manner to get stronger resonances and have higher resolution at adjusting the levels. So you can hear now we have a tone and I can regulate this tone by adjusting the level of the different harmonics. I'm happy with this tuning that has a strong fundamental and second harmonic but weaker third and fourth harmonics. Now let's export this sample as an audio file and hop into contact. Ah, contact. I'm loving it. Let's create a new instrument by double clicking here. I don't quite understand why many users are afraid of contact. It's not as complicated as some might think. In future videos, we will look at the overall structure of contact. But for now, we are just interested in the mapping editor. Click the mapping editor. Whereas the name suggests, we'll map our sample to the key we want. Although I tune my sample to D6, I'm going to map it to D5 over here. I drop it on D5 because I want to retain some of the high frequencies. Let's just extend the range. That's it, one sample, extend the range. For starters, I'll move down to the instrument's effects section. I'm going to add a choral and a reverb effect to give some ambience and movement. 
I'll also add a limiter at the end of our chain. And now concept two, attack and release. As it stands, when I press a key, the sound starts abruptly. And when I release the key, it stops abruptly. Sophisticated sampling companies like our mates at Spitfire Audio are very particular about their attack. Often their strings sound better than other companies because they add quite some attack. This slow onset of the sound can be very cinematic, so I will shape the attack both in time and also shape here in the modulation section to get a slow cinematic onset. Similarly, I need to address the release. I want the sound to fade out slowly after I release the key. And this allows smooth movement through the phrases. Better. Let us go deeper into using attack and release for expressiveness. Although the attack and release values I set serve the purpose for certain phrasing, I want the instrument to react to my playing organically. This is where modulation comes in. In specific, I want the sound to come in faster when I press hard on the keys and slower when I press soft. In a sense, I want velocity to regulate attack. And this little button here opens the modulation panel. Here we choose which parameter modulates what. I want velocity to regulate attack. The default relationship of how velocity affects attack is directly proportional. So if I play with high velocity, the attack is long. I want the opposite. I want high velocity to result in a shorter attack. So I give this invert button here, a click. And if I play slow, I play a little bit harder and harder and harder. Of course, this is extreme and I want the subtle effect. So I reduce the effect of the modulation using the slider. So by playing with these three controls, one can tailor an instrument to his or her performance style. I'll also regulate the release in a similar way. And that is when I depress the key fast, the release is shorter. And when I depress the key slowly, the release of the sound is longer. And now we have this. can almost hear voices or something else in the sound. Don't forget an important principle of expressive instruments. There has to be the right balance between instability and stability, between unpredictability and predictability. The instrument needs to have a well-defined predictable sound and pitch, yet be unstable at times, organic. Now then, had this been a Spitfire audio walkthrough, I would have layered this patch with a 2000 euro, pounds or dollars virtual instrument and I would be amazed at how well they work together. Almost custom made to the symphonic strings, right? Instead, I would layer it with a humble old piano I sampled from my private toolkit. Let's see how it sounds. It's better to hear it in context. So I will score to picture, rather improvise to picture. Speedfire Audio has kindly asked me to score their new promotional spot. As if. So I will just let the video run and record my improvisation. Let's do it. Oh, there is a crying man.
This has been emotional. Let's go get some fresh air. So we recorded some thin air that provided unpredictability. We tuned it using the harmonic series and an EQ, and we used a tag and release with modulation to make it expressive. One sample, one dynamic layer, no round robins, and 250 KB, a quarter of a megabyte memory required. It layers well with lots of other stuff. So I encourage you to go out and record your own ambient environments, sounds that inspire you. Tune them to your liking. Perhaps use more than four harmonics or less. Play with the levels of each harmonic, then import it to your sampler, use a tag and release until it feels right to you. After all, it's a simple process that will get you going. It will help you follow more involved creative sampling in my future videos. I hope you found value in this video. Till the next time, be happy. Oh, and check this cloud.